Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Paul Yester here, and well, I can give you some information about uh, some of the survivor perks and the power of the Demogorgon right now. If you would like, as I told you yesterday, there is going to be a dev stream on Thursday where they're going to announce all this stuff officially tomorrow. So if you don't want it spoiled and you want to watch the dev stream yourself to hear about the perks and the powers, just stop watching. For those of you who don't mind knowing about the information early, um, Matthew Cote is in Germany at uh, the Gamescom convention, and he did some media there. I'm told that behavior is only in the business section and perhaps merchandise, but they don't have a booth like they have at PAX. So um, I think he's doing media over there. And uh, there was an interview on a Giga website which is in German, and they talk about technology. And um, he did an interview about this Stranger Things chapter and gave us some information about the chapter. And I'm going to go ahead and read the interview here with you, and we'll go through it together. So let's see. We'll turn this on here. Stranger Things in Dead by Daylight, New Hawkins Map, and the Demogorgon Perks by Marina Hensel. Stranger Things and Dead by Daylight are two completely different franchises with one thing in common, both whisper of a strange, dark other world that houses so many horrors for us. Why this fits so well and what perks await us in the DLC, DVD director Matthew Cote has betrayed us? No, I don't think that was probably something lost in translation there. Please read, otherwise the Demogorgon will eat you up. If you play DVD for a little while, you know that almost everything that I'm going to tell you can change, especially the survivors and skills of the survivors, as well as the killer will be in the PTB test phase revised shortly before release. Did you hear that too? It's almost seemed to me that someone was shouting in the Hawkins lab. In the stra series Stranger Things? No, of course, in Dead by Daylight, because there you'll be crawling through the Hawkins lab with two new survivor characters, this is the new map that awaits you as the release of the Stranger Things DLC. I caught a glimpse of Gamescom 2019 to talk to Dead by Daylight director Matthew Cote about the new DLC and the first non-human killer in the game, so listen carefully. Not only are we expecting three new killer perks, but also six new survivor perks. Cote has already given me some details about them. Then they showed the trailer. First, we go into the Hawkins Lab map. This finally brings back a labyrinth map inside a building. Also, some of the rooms on the map should be in the upside down world, so it's likely to look pretty peculiar. And as on other licensed maps, there will certainly be some allusions to the Stranger Things universe again. Unfortunately, I do not have any of the pictures yet because Matthew Cote only told me a bit about the upcoming update. So it sounds like um, in the lab, it's gonna be where they have the portal open and some of the upside down is spilling into the lab. Demogorgon. Demogorgon. Ah, mommy's doing it again. The Demogorgon, a.k.a. the Stranger Things monster, is the killer who teleports into the game next. Oh, by the way, teleportation is a good keyword because one of the main abilities of the Demogorgon is to be able to always teleport to different locations on the map. So similar to the revised Freddy, who can beam himself to generators recently. Lore, technically... Teleportation is fairly straightforward as the Demogorgon takes a path throughout the alternate universe of the Upside Down when jumping from place to place. Here's how it works. You can create portals anywhere that will eventually teleport you to another location on the map. The question, of course, is whether the starting portal for the survivor is visible before the Demogorgon slips through. So we've seen some stills of that. I'll go with that at the end here. So what about the perks? Cote did not tell me the exact details of the perks, but for the most part, they should specialize in stopping survivors, stopping them from repairing generators or fingering totems. Just about everything what they're doing right now. What does it mean? A perk, for example, is particularly nasty. When a generator is done, all windows and vaults in the game are blocked for 30 seconds. Talk about slowing down the game just a little bit. What? <laughs> If I do a gen, everything is blocked for 30 seconds? This sounds scary. A second perk kicks all generators within a certain radius of the killer as soon as it hits survivor. All affected generators lose progress from then on unless a survivor touches them again. The Demogorgon will... He's doing it, Mom! The Demogorgon will mainly slow down the game, and as Mr. Cote has also told me, he is damn strong. 
So within your terror radius, if you kick a gen, any gens within your terror radius are going to be effectively kicked at the same time. Interesting. The survivors, Nancy Wheeler and Steve Harrington. Six new survivor perks. That's a lot. In fact, the Stranger Things update is the biggest chapter ever to be thrown into DVD at once. As Matthew Cote puts it, Steve Wheeler will take on the job as a babysitter. That means he'll be able to attack to save others. He will also make it easier for his teammates to escape from the killer. A first perk by Steve, for example, helps those whom he rescues. They will then leave no footprints for a certain amount of time and make no size of pain. Besides, and that's part of the same perk, Steve or the survivor who has equipped this perk, knowing that it's teachable and you could put it on other characters, suddenly sees the killer's aura just as the killer can see him. So it's like a mini object of obsession for a short period of time. This allows Steve to catch the killer's attention. So it's like, hey, hey, come get me. Nancy Wheeler, on the other hand, is the opposite of Steve. She acts purposely and wants to push the game as fast as possible. One of their perks is therefore an obsession perk. However, she is not obsessed by the killer, but by a generator on the map. She gets bonuses when she completes this one generator, which bonuses are not revealed. Another perk by one of the two survivors makes it possible to see their own footprints and as it were to walk faster. A skill that in my eyes can actually be very useful in tricking the killer. After all, as a survivor, you'll be better off tracking the trail and watching the killer close up, hoping that he'll fall for it. So you're going to be able to see your own scratch marks? That's kind of an interesting idea. I know like when I play with Mark, he's very good at leaving diversionary scratch marks and then walking back to try and get the killer to off the scent and it works really well. Will that be the new meta perk? Who knows? Yet Behavior Interactive has not yet revealed all the perks, but do not despair. Matthew Cote finally hinted at the end of our conversation that he and Behavior will be talking more about Stranger Things DLC on the stream on the Twitch channel on Thursday, which is tomorrow. So do not forget to turn it on over the next few days. I will, of course, update this article. Well, who wants to play a Demogorgon? Me! All right, so that's what I've got for you today. I do think that this is... Um, legitimate information but the weirdest thing is that this one perk here about being obsessed with a generator I showed you in one of my uh, previous videos that somebody had put together what they called a uh, a joke build for Nancy that they they had done Steve previously here it is and then they did Nancy and they gave her this perk, which sounds astoundingly like the real perk this Nancy drew here. And I would have thought, okay, well, the devs read this person's idea and they thought, hey, that's good. Let's use what they came up with and scrap whatever our third perk was for Nancy. However, it looks like they only came up with this idea six days ago. So how is that possible? Is that enough time for the dev to say, yeah, let's do that idea and change it? Or am I wrong about the timing of this? Because this seems to have appeared only six days ago on Reddit. So it's really, really unusual. I just don't know what to make of it at all. It's uncanny. Could they just have come up with an idea and it wound up being the very thing that behavior was doing? I, I just, it astounds me. I just really don't understand it at all. So anyway, we don't have to wait long to get all the answers. Deathstream is coming out tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check your clocks. You can Google it to figure out what time zone you are in and what time that means 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is for you tomorrow. I'm going to live stream it and uh, just get the reactions when they reveal it all. We'll find out the rest of these perks. This part that says that Steve gets to attack is interesting. And um, I do have these stills here for you. Where is it? This one? Yeah. So there's the Demogorgon um, emerging from one of the portals and chasing down the survivors. And then there's another part where it looks like perhaps Steve and Nancy are pulling at the portal. So maybe you can take portals away from the Demogorgon, I don't know. 
We'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, it looks like they're yanking on it, right? Why would you be around the thing that the killer could teleport out of at any instant? Why would you want to be there? Anyway, we're going to find out more about it tomorrow. Very excited to find out all the news. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the public test build is going to be uh, next week, next Tuesday, August 27th, and full chapter release. September 10th, that's the information I'm sticking with until I hear otherwise. So, that's what I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care of each other out there in the fog, and bye-bye.